And when he got his fastball, he destroyed it. Hello and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Toronto Blue Jays. I am your host, Adam Peddle. And that would make me your host, Nicholas Playalog. Today on Blue Jays Today, we are getting back to the roots, getting back to where we came from, the player breakdowns. Yes. I am literally shocked that we haven't <laughs> broken down this guy. When, when we first brought up this video, yeah. I said to Adam, I said... There's no way. We've <laughs> we've absolutely broken him down and you said No. No, we haven't. Which we, which you know blew my mind. Because um, because we got to we we projected that Shaw would be fifth batting fifth and we were going down the lineup. It was like Flatty and then uh, and then Shaw and then the season started. And yes. Tio would have been next. And and I think that what happened was cuz I kept wanting to break this guy down. Yeah. But my breakdown of him kept shifting. Yeah. So I I don't think we ever actually pulled the trigger on it. No. The guy that we're breaking down today is T. Oscar Hernandez. Right. Somebody who, if maybe healthy the entire year, he missed 10 games, could have been in the MVP conversation and oh, even yeah. still was having missed all that time. So we are breaking him down today. Before we get into that, go, please make sure to smash the notification button, ring the bell, comment down below, subscribe, and become a Patreon member. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost one of our faithful. Oh, um, no. But uh, that's okay, <laughs> because I'm sure that all of you guys out there want to give your money to us. Yeah, and yeah. join the community. Yeah, so exactly. become a Patreon member, and we will answer your question. Yeah. All right. Tio Hernandez breaking him down. Where do we he begin? He changed a lot. Where do That's we begin? where I think yeah. we should begin. Where he changed. Okay, well, before, here's the reason why we, we were kind of dodging him. Because before, you know, obviously we we both didn't like him. We've said this in this podcast. Before 2020, we both didn't like him. We thought, oh, well, this guy's expecting batting average was so bad in 2019. It's got awful. It was horrible. It was literally, it was literally 220. It was bottom 4% in the league. His slugging was 455. Like, that was expected slugging. Like, it was okay, but mm -hmm. it's still, the, he was not living up to what we what we acquired him for. Right, because I remember watching the games, and, uh, and, and I also want to preface this by saying 2018, he wasn't any better than 2019 either. No. You know, he wasn't <laughs> good in that year either. So, so this was kind of a trend that was going down. And in 2019, we fell down an even deeper rabbit hole yeah. where we really suffered. But I kept watching those games and I kept hearing the bloody announcers and everybody being like, oh yeah, like we're just waiting on Tio Hernandez <laughs> to hit, you know, like this guy's going to be big for the Blue Jays. Yeah. I'm like, no, and then, he's not, and man. He, and he wasn't. Well, here's the thing. The biggest thing that they were saying was he could hit. For, he has raw power. He can hit for such power. Mm -hmm. And he can. He is really, really good. At, Cannot deny that. Cannot deny that. That's yeah, been universal that's been his, throughout the entire that's time. That's been his thing. He just needs to make more consistent contact and change his plate approach. Right. And I truly believe in 2020, he changed his plate approach. As mm -hmm. soon as Dante Pichette came to the team and was helping out the hitters... He changed. You saw it a little bit in Gritchick. You saw it a little bit in all the other players, but him was impacted the most. Yeah, what changed, Nick? Well, I mean, like, y you saw all of his stats literally get way better. Um, mm -hmm. And, like, d like so drastically, in perhaps, you know, we were talking about expected batting average in 2019. And the way that I did this was I, I put down 2019 stats, and then I put down 2020 stats right next to each other. And it's truly messed up. In 2020, his expected batting average was 220, and in, or I'm sorry, oh, in, in 2019, yeah. and then in 2020, it was 295, <laughs> and that was like right up there for being the top in the league. Yeah, top eight percent. His expected slugging jumped from 455 to 613. Uh, like rid ridiculous Ridic top number. 3%. Ridiculous That's number. That's top three percent. His hard hit rate jumped up by 10%. It was already really high at 42.3%. <laughs> then it got to 53.1%. And to put that in comparison to the MLB average, MLB average is 34.9%. So this guy's hitting the ball 20% harder yeah. than anyone else. And that was already his strength. So yeah. you can tell that he got a lot more confidence 
and he was barreling the ball a hell of a lot more. Yeah, he was. And in all, and I truly believe, and I, you've seen it, everyone's seen it. It truly comes down to his plate approach. He changed it. He he truly did. In 2019, I have a couple of these numbers from Statcast. In 2019, his chase percentage was was at 25. percent It actually went up to 30.9. It might seem like a bad thing at first, but this is all part of the approach because his chase contact actually went up too. It was at 45% in 2019, up to 51 in 2020. So while he was chasing more, he was making more contact. And what that tells me is that he's shortening up, he's gripping up, he's like choking up on the bat, and he's protecting the plate. Yeah, he's chasing more, but he's making more contact. So he's actually made his change in his two-strike approach. He's added that to his game, and he's also taking more first pitch strikes. 38% in 2019, and, uh, or sorry, he's not swinging at first pitches more. And mm. It was 38% in 2019, and it was 26% in 2020, which yeah. tells me he's being more selective and building that at bat. Right. I, I completely agree. And and like we said, you know, you saw it in the production numbers. This guy slugged for <laughs> 579 last year, which when you look at his expected slugging is actually unlucky. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting to me about Teoscar Hernandez, and, and that's the thing, like he barreled the ball. I said that last time he was barreling it more, barreled at 18 percent. That was that was a massive jump from the 11.7 that he had in 2019. Yeah. We always had a problem, and and you know what? I, I still do, kind of, and this is going to come into our projection for what we're saying for 2021. He strikes out a lot, and he did drop it a little bit Just in 2020 yeah. by about 2.5%, but he was still striking out 30.4% of the time where the MLB league average is 21.8%. Now, how does like yeah. what are your feelings with regards to that? I here's the thing. I mean, my feeling has never changed my entire life when I'm watching baseball. You can strike out 30% of the times, but if you hit homers, you drive in runs, you're hitting for a good average, I'm okay with it. Oh, I'm I, simply I, okay I with don't it. disagree. Yeah. I don't disagree. I mean, you put up these numbers, like I don't care if you strike <laughs> out 99% of the time. Yeah, if, yeah. If this happens to be the yeah, result, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. What do you I think, think? Well, I think my point is that, you know, because he's still, I was looking at his whiffs and like whiffing is when you, 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 you just you flat whiff. out miss the ball. <laughs> um, now he's got a career average of, uh, or you know, his career average is 11.5% higher than MLB average. So he, his whiffing a lot and he was barreling the ball an ungodly mount last season so this for me coming into 2021 is saying there could be a bit of regression here if we're not barreling it at the same level which is literally you know an mvp sort of level at 18 percent like that is very 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 yeah, high because he was it was top two percent in barrel percentage yes last year. like he yes. was barrel and that barrel. is you know again a complete drastic leap from anything yeah. he's done in his career yeah and and again like the reason i still say it the reason why is because of that approach and when i look also at his approach and why it's factored into these crazy high numbers and barrel percentage exit below the slugging expected slugging expected batting average is because he is all because of the approach and i want to break down his um, his strike zone or swing take profile, which is basically like the amount of runs generated with pitches in certain parts of the strike zone, right? So I want to take two parts of the strike zone, which is the heart of the strike zone and the perimeter, the edges of the strike zone. Pitchers will kill you on the edges and every hitter, even Mike Trout, has a negative run value on the edges because that's where pitchers live and die. Like if you can go there, you're not going to hit it. Uh, in 2019, uh, he had a, a four plus run value in total in 2020, he had a seven plus run value. So he was generating more runs. Now, to break it down even further, in 2019, he had negative four runs generated in the heart of the zone. So that means when people were putting it right down the middle, he was he was finding ways to get out and which lose is, runs. Which is where you need to be creating. That's where runs. you need to be creating runs. Whereas in 2020, he had a nine plus nine runs generated from the heart of the zone. Okay, so he was so, getting a lot better at recognizing what we need to be smacking right he now. He was looking for a pitch and sticking to that pitch, and when it came into his sweet spot, he was not missing and he was barely in. That all comes down to that new approach he has. Well, you keep saying the new approach, like... 
Yeah. What is that? Like the, new the, approach, the way that you're you're describing you select, it, like is that you like select selective? a pitch? Yeah, yeah, he's a great fastball hitter. You select one pitch and you wait for that pitch. Mm-hmm. That's it. If it's not, if you throw a hanging curveball first pitch, even if it's right down the middle, if that's not your pitch, don't swing at it. Wait for the fastball. Right. You, you want one pitch, and when he hit, when he got his fastball, he destroyed it because that's why he was barreling it so much because he was dominating it when pitchers gave him fastballs down in the heart of the plate. Mm-hmm. So my my question to you then, coming into 2021, if you're realizing this. I think a couple other MLB GMs could be realizing this. <laughs> Pitchers, in fact. Yeah. And they might be adjusting to T. Oscar Hernandez. Yes. Do you think that he will be able to adjust as the league adjusts to him? And that's what we're going to have to see because what he needs to do to then adjust to the league. Because if I'm a pitcher, what I would do to adjust to T. Oscar Hernandez is don't give him a fastball down the middle because <laughs> he can hit it now. Exactly. So yeah. you're going to, so fastballs, or not fastballs, pitchers are going to have to be perfect and live on the edges. And if they're not perfect and they're throwing on the edges, T. Oscar has to have the discipline now early in the count to not swing at those. And we've seen that in, in his first pitch taking. He's not taking that first pitch mm-hmm. because he's pitchers aren't going to want to come to him right away. They're he is be still chasing a lot of pitches, though. He is. Granted, he is. you know. Granted, that is part of his approach if he gets to two strikes. I'd like to, I like We actually don't have the numbers for that, but what, how the, much he's yeah. swinging that two mm-hmm, strikes. Mm-hmm. That is, and, and I did notice that that was, like there were a couple at bats. I remember when he came back from injury, we were kind of reverting back to we're swinging, yeah. we're swinging, we're swinging. Um, but in large in part, based, in, based on the eye test, I wasn't seeing him swing at garbage, garbage. stuff anymore, yeah. and we saw that a lot in 2019. Yes. Um, and that's going to be something that he really needs to continue moving forward. Uh, so, yeah, what, again, coming yeah. into 2021, <laughs> what is your outlook for this guy? You know, I, I mm-hmm. didn't I didn't put out production numbers because yeah. I'm still waiting to see, you know, yeah. who we get in this team, where right, he's going right. to bat, the lineup. Right. But I did give him a slash line that I yeah. think is pretty realistic. And I'm curious to know what you think we can expect out of yeah. T. Oscar moving forward. Yeah, go for it. Um, or you, what's your you. slash line? Oh, I thought you were giving me the slash line. What's the slash line? Oh, okay. My slash line that mm-hmm. I put uh, is I think that, you know, we are going to see regression in the uh, in the batting average. I think that he's going to bat for something like 259 with an on-base percentage of 315 and a slugging o- of 509. Okay. Uh, which, to be honest... I wouldn't be opposed to. In fact, I think that that would be that would be pretty good for okay. what I expect for him. A career batting average of 245, that's still improvement. I think that we are going to see some regression from yeah. the 289, the 579 slugging, but if you're still slugging over 500, it means that you are giving us home runs, you are providing run support. Um and I'd be happy with that for a guy who I think should start to develop into our five hitter yeah fair enough uh and in, in my verdict is basically i think yeah Tio is going to not regress heavily i think his floor is definitely going to be raised with this approach i mean that that expected batting average i just cannot ignore 295 like he, he clearly changed his approach and it's changed his slugging so i think i hope for Tio to hit 270 next year with 35 home runs i'd be amazing yeah because because he was hitting like what he hit 289 289 uh in yeah in 50 games he hit 289 yeah i think if his floor is i think his floor is gonna be raised and i'd like to challenge to to make the adjustment to the pitchers to take more pitches even more pitches because now they're not coming after you silver slugger you're gonna have to let them come to you and keep in your approach and you can hit 270 with 35 home runs so you're saying you're saying his floor Mm -hmm. i think we can both agree his floor is not 270 like that's pretty good what do you think his floor would be? floor would be 250 like kind of around what you were saying that'd be my floor for in in my opinion um i think his ceiling is 285 and so that's why i picked like 270 270? i think he's gonna land somewhere in there okay okay yeah i mean i think if he did uh what what you're projecting 270 with 35 home runs then we would be a very lucky ball club, yes. and uh, I'm setting my expectations a bit lower. But to be honest, I'd still be very happy if he hit 259, and yeah, you know, it'd be gave it. Yeah. And to be honest, the home runs I think would be around the exact same. Yeah, that's I'm projecting the, the home runs to be exact same, but 
I think the batting average won't quite get to 270. Fair enough, fair enough. And this is a funny stat. We're talking about home runs. Uh, obviously, this is skewed, and I love the 2020, like, on pace for stats because they're mm. not realistic. But he was on pace for 51 home runs. Yeah. And ridiculous. 110 RBIs. Yeah. So, like... If, let's say, that was a full season, he was able to stick to that approach, like, you could easily hit 40 home runs that season. I think that, uh, you know, yeah, I, I do think that he yeah. probably would have got to, to 40, you know, yeah. at least 35, at for least, sure, at least. based that's, on what he was doing last season. So That's what I'm hoping for next season. Yeah, really hoping that T.O. can come in as hot as he was last year and, uh, and not revert back to his old 2018-2019 ways because he was a massive boost agreed. in the lineup. For agreed, sure. agreed. Guys, what do you think about Teoscar Hernandez? Do you guys think he's going to have another great year? Maybe win another Silver Slugger? Let us know in the comments down below. It would be nice. You can check us out on Spotify, Breaker, Anchor, Radio Public, and Google Podcasts. Also, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. The Instagram always popping off. And you can become a Patreon member for $3 a month. I knew I would get it. You know, yes, I wasn't even it. I wasn't even thinking about it, and my <laughs> exactly. brain and my body just kind of exactly. Bleh. You're the throw to man. You're yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't thinking about it. So those are all the platforms, yeah, yeah. guys. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. And go Jays, go.